data driven approach. So in the data driven approach, the uh, machine learning algorithms uh, uh, heavily dependent on the data from which they uh, they learn uh, they uh, they learn during their training and uh, uh, and then they are applying for different applications. In the year 1997, IBM's uh, Deep Blue beats the world champion at chess. So uh, most of you are familiar uh, with this uh, incident that in the year 1997, IBM's Deep Blue. Uh, uh, this is the uh, this is the autonomous uh, machine learning system uh, which beats the world champion at chess. In the year 2006, Jeffrey Hinton points the term deep learning to uh, explain new algorithms that let computers see and distinguish objects and text in images and videos. So uh, Jeffrey Hinton uh, first, uh, firstly coins the uh, term deep learning uh, to explain uh, some uh, neural network based algorithm and uh, these neural network based algorithms are uh, used to distinguish the objects and text which are found in images and videos. Okay, in the year 2010, the Microsoft Kinect, uh, uh, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Kinect was used to track 20 human features at the rate of 30 times per second, and this was uh, this was allowing allowing people to interact with the computer via movements and gestures. Okay, so this was this uh, uh, Microsoft Kinect was developed. By Microsoft Corporation in the year 2010. In the year 2011, IBM uh, IBM's Watson beats its uh, human competitor at Jeopardy. So uh, this Jeopardy was a kind of game uh, in which the IBM uh, IBM developed uh, developed uh, its human uh, human competitor in the year 2011. In the same year 2011, Google Brain uh, was developed and it is based on the deep neural network and uh, it is used to learn to discover and categorize objects much the way a cat does. Okay. In the next year, 2012, uh, Google's XLab uh, developed a machine learning algorithm uh, which is able to autonomously browse YouTube videos to identify the videos that contain cats. That means uh, so Google X Lab uh, develops a machine learning algorithm. So this machine learning algorithm is able to classify uh, classify the videos which are uh, which are frequently found uh, frequently found in YouTube's and that on that contains only cats. Okay, that means those videos which are having uh, cat content as a cat, so they are being successfully identified or they are being classified successfully by kind of machine learning algorithm which was developed by Google in the year 2012. In the year 2014, Facebook uh, developed DeepFace. So DeepFace is a kind of uh, software algorithm which is able to recognize or verify individuals on photos to the same level as human kinds. Okay, that means uh, we the uh, we the humans, uh, whenever we see a face, so we can correctly identify and uh, the identification uh, identification may be uh, maybe their name uh, we can identify by, by their name by their some kind of id card uh, some kind of identification identification artifacts so similarly that uh, a deep face a deep face uh, software algorithm was developed by facebook in the year 2014 which is also able to mimic the human cognitive process and the thought process of the human brain successfully that they are uh, they are used to classify um, classify the individuals or recognize the individuals as uh, at the same level as humans do okay in the year 2015 amazon's uh, launch is for uh, own machine learning platform, which is popularly known as Amazon Web Services. So basically Amazon Web Services uh, was targeted to form uh, uh, targeted to form the cloud service 
but uh, later on uh, the amazon web services uh, web service equipped with uh, equipped with many uh, uh, many ai tools or uh, open or some uh, uh, open softwares uh, which are uh, which are related to amazon web services or amazon cloud services so they are successfully used uh, successfully used to build some build an ai application okay so different ai applications so uh, which is uh, which is another uh, popular ai tool and uh, this is associated with amazon okay in the year 2015 microsoft uh, created a distributed machine learning toolkit in the year 2016 google's artificial intelligence algorithm beats a professional player at the chinese bone uh, chinese board game go so most of you are familiar with this uh, chinese board game uh, go that uh, this is a very uh, uh, this is a very intelligent uh, chinese board game so here google's artificial intelligence algorithm uh, uh, was able to beat the professional player who is uh, uh, who is expert uh, in uh, chinese board game go okay now uh, this was the quick uh, review of machine learning history so now uh, when you talk about uh, when you talk about machine learning theories and machine learning algorithms so um, often uh, frequently uh, frequently some questions come to uh, some questions come to our mind that uh, how a machine uh, how a machine can see how a machine can uh, classify how a machine can sense okay so this type of uh, questions come uh, come around uh, our mind and uh, now uh, during the evolution of uh, machine learning algorithms uh, machines are uh, machines are able to uh, learn from the previous data or learn from the experience data are uh, and also able to perform uh, perform some efficient tasks okay so so according to uh, so when we uh, when we uh, when we talk about the machine learning algorithm so uh, we need to understand uh, how machines works and how machines uh, learns from the uh, data okay and then perform um, some task so according to uh, arthur samuel machine learning algorithms are enable uh, the computers to learn from data and even improve themselves without being explicitly programmed okay so this is very important without being explicitly programmed because uh, when machines are learning from uh, learning from trained data or training data and they are trying to improve themselves then when they will perform some tasks okay and during during uh, during their uh, uh, during their performance so they are not uh, they are not they are not provided uh, they are not provided with some instruction or explicitly uh, done program okay that means without explicitly program without explicit instruction or without explicit command or without explicit program so they can perform the task because initially uh, initially we are making them uh, we are making the machine learning algorithms or machine learning programs to learn from training data and uh, then and gradually they improve their performance by themselves from the learned data okay and once they uh, once they improve uh, themselves then uh, they are they can perform uh, they can perform any uh, any tasks without uh, without explicitly been program without explicit command or without explicit instructions human instructions okay so this is the uh, uh, so uh, this is the goal. basically this is the goal of the machine learning algorithms that a machine should learn from uh, whenever we design a machine learning algorithm or machine learning application so machine learning algorithm should learn from the data and then gradually they will improve their performance and uh, when they will perform the some tasks so they will perform the tasks without having some explicit commands or without having some explicit 
instructions okay now to understand the machine learning uh, uh, machine learning um, uh, definition this definition is uh, this definition is uh, given by uh, arthur samuel so if we try to understand this uh, definition then uh, we will consider three entities okay so entities e e uh, e denotes the experience and then another entity t which denotes the cl class of task and another entity p uh, which denotes the performance measure okay so if we consider there is a computer program which is learning from experience c so here experience e is nothing but the training data okay so here the computer uh, we have designed let us consider uh, we have designed a computer program and this computer program is trying to learn from this train data or training data and with respect to some class of task okay that means after after having um, after having after having some learning experience from the training data the computer program will be able to perform some task okay and this class of task is denoted uh, by t capital t and when the when the computer program that we have designed is able to perform the tasks then there will be some performance that means if we measure the performance then this performance measure can be denoted by p okay now it is been said that a computer program a computer program is learning from the experience with respect to some class of task t and performance measure p if its performance at task in t as measured by p improves with experience e okay so as i said uh, as i said uh, earlier that whenever a machine learning program or machine learning algorithm tries to learn from the uh, tries to learn from the training data so gradually it improves the performance okay gradually it improves the performance means if it gradually improves uh, the performance Uh, perform the performance then we can measure that performance by some performance metrics okay and sometimes it is denoted uh, denoted by uh, sometimes it is denoted by p okay so these three entities are uh, inherently inherently related to uh, any machine learning programs or any any machine learning algorithms or any machine learning application so whenever we talk about the machine learning algorithms then these three entities will be predominantly interrelated to each other so without having without having the without having uh, the experience on the training data a machine learning algorithm or machine learning program cannot perform okay so this experience is uh, experience is necessary on the training data now uh, to understand in to understand the machine learning in uh, uh, in better way so we can consider two uh, examples so first example is, uh, first example is a checkers learning problem another example is hand handwriting recognition learning problem so if we consider the checkers learning problem in checkers learning problem problem if we consider these three entities okay experience e class of task t and performance measure p then here the task is t is playing checkers so playing checkers is the uh, playing checkers uh, is considered as the class of task t okay and percentage of uh, games won against opponents is considered as performance measure p then playing practice games again itself is considered the training experience e okay so here whenever uh, when uh, when the training is when uh, the checkers learning program is able to uh, uh, able to perform the training uh, uh, training on the uh, training on the given data then gradually it will improve the performance and whenever training is completed then the checkers learning uh, checkers learning application or checkers learning program will be able to Uh, play the practice games again itself okay again itself as well as opponent because if we consider the training experience then uh, obviously the we will consider the uh, uh, we all we will consider the 
playing practice games uh, that are been uh, that are been played again itself okay and if we if we if we consider the performance measure then how the performance measure will be uh, performance measure will be uh, calculate so here the performance measure will be considered for the percentage of games that won against opponents so if the uh, if the checkers landing uh, program uh, or the uh, checkers landing um, uh, program will consider the playing the checkers then whenever uh, it uh, whenever it will play against some uh, uh, some other opponents then definitely there will be a performance measure that means we will consider if if there are uh, if if, if the checkers landing uh, program is playing against opponent and uh, if this landing program is uh, playing 10 matches then how many matches out of 10 matches are won by this checker landing program so that will be considered and accordingly we will measure the performance okay now the another example uh, is handwriting recognition landing problem so here also we consider three uh, three different entities tax t performance measure p and training experience e okay any questions can you uh, mute your voice hello So in handwriting uh, recognition learning problem, uh, so here uh, we are recognizing and classifying handwritten words within images. Okay, so if there are if there are if there are a number of words uh, which are found uh, uh, which are found within images, then they will be classified and recognized by this handwriting recognition learning application or learning program. Okay. And this has been considered as the class of task T. And what is the performance measure? So here the performance measure is considered as the percent percentage of words that have been correctly classified. That means if there are n number of words which are found in the images, then out of n number of words, how many words are successfully classified or correctly classified? So they are, uh, they are, uh, they will be considered as the performance measure. Okay. So, so uh, we can, we can, uh, we can represent this performance measure as the percentage. So, what is the percentage? What is the, uh, what is the correctly? Uh, uh, how many words are correctly classified? So they can, uh, so this can be represented by the percentage, percentage of classification. Okay. The next is the training uh, experience. So, uh, it, so the so the database of handwritten uh, words uh, with given classification. So, this will be considered as the training experience. Okay. So, if we uh, if we if we provide a database of handwritten words with given classification, then this will be considered as the training experience E. Okay. So these two, uh, these two are the uh, uh, these two are the examples by which uh, uh, we can understand uh, we can understand the machine learning uh, machine learning uh, machine learning concept and the three uh, and three different entities uh, elaborately. Now, when machine learning is needed, so if we ask this question to ourselves, then uh, then the, we can find uh, there are several situations where uh, where human expertise does not work okay or human expertise does not exist so in this this kind of uh, situations uh, this kind of situations are uh, are uh, this kind of situations uh, uh, seek this machine learning expertise okay now if we consider the navigating on Mars, so uh, this uh, navigating on Mars, if we if we think about this particular situation, then uh, here the human expertise does not exist or human expertise does not work. So 
in such situation machine learning algorithm uh, uh, will machine learning algorithm will be developed as part of artificial intelligence and then uh, we can uh, we can apply or we can use that machine learning application uh, in navigating on mars if we consider the speech recognition here the humans uh, are unable to explain their expertise because here it is very difficult to recognize uh, it is very difficult to recognize a speech over the phone okay so 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 nowadays many different technologies are developed so with uh, with those technologies uh, we can change our tone of the voice so it is very difficult for the humans to recognize the voices so rather if we develop uh, some machine learning uh, applications or machine learning algorithms so which will be able to successfully recognize the uh, voices over telephone or over some other uh, other medium which are coming from other end okay another situation is very interesting uh, which is uh, stock market and um, routing on a computer network so here also the human expertise does not work so because here the solutions are frequently change in uh, change over time okay so here in the uh, in such uh, situations uh, if we use the machine learning applications or machine learning algorithms then uh, this will work much better than the human expertise okay because here so solutions are frequently change over time the next uh, next application may be the biometrics where uh, the human expertise uh, human expertise uh, will work slow and uh, and uh, moreover it does not uh, work properly so therefore we have to depend on the machines on which the machine learning algorithms run okay so because here the solutions need to be adapted to a particular cases adapted means here here the here the subjects are here the subjects here the subjects are frequently uh, change their uh, change their positions change their appearance okay and due to different uh, uh, due to different uh, uh, due to different environment so it is very difficult to recognize a person by his face by his fingerprint okay by his retina so if we consider a, if we consider a particular case of biometrics identification like face biometrics then so face uh, recognizing face biometrics is very difficult in unconstant environment in constant environment it is somehow uh, somehow very easy task by the machines but if we uh, uh, if we if we consider the unconstant environment then we have to, we have to also consider the lighting conditions we have to consider the appearance of the face we have to consider the pose of the face we have to consider we have to consider uh, we have to consider the background okay we have to consider the glasses so these are the different uh, these are the different difficulties uh, which are found in the unconstant environment so whenever we try to recognize a face in unconstant environment so it is very difficult for the human beings but it is it is uh, not not very difficult for the machines on which the machine learning algorithms run okay because here the uh, here uh, here the solutions here the machine learning solutions need the adaptive uh, adaptive environment where the adaptive adaptive environment in adaptive environment machines will always uh, be improved uh, uh, gradually over the time and it will successfully uh, it will successfully recognize the persons by their faces in unconstant environment so these are the uh, these are the, these are a few uh, situations where uh, human expertise does not work but uh, machines will work with uh, some ai uh, equipped system now uh, if we talk about uh, the applications of uh, machine learnings then uh, there are a uh, few there are a few broad area where machine learning algorithms are heavily used like healthcare retail manufacturing banking and finance transportation so these are the uh, these are the major areas where machine learning applications are used so in healthcare machine learning solutions are 
been used to help medical uh, professionals to detect the presence of disease. So this is one of the uh, most prominent application in healthcare. Okay, presence of uh, disease, even type of disease, and what are the symptoms uh, with those symptoms, uh, uh, which disease, which uh, uh, disease can be detected. So these are the uh, these are the different tasks of the machine learning solutions or machine learning applications in healthcare. Even uh, these machine learning processes are also used to detect the emotional states via smartphone data. Okay. In retail, machine learning technologies uh, powers Amazon's. Uh, you may also like suggestions. So you, some all, some of you uh, may, some of you are familiar with this uh, kind of suggestions which are found uh, on Amazon. And these machine learning processes, uh, machine learning processes are also behind the Netflix recommendation algorithm. So we will talk about this Netflix recommendation algorithm. In manufacturing, machine uh, learning algorithms help uh, manufacturer to reduce process driven losses. OK, increase capacity by optimizing the production process and reduce cost by guiding predictive maintenance. So these are uh, these are the few uh, these are the few uh, these are the few uh, major tasks which are done by machine learning algorithms in manufacturing uh, area. OK. In banking and finance, banks and financial institutions utilize machine learning to detect and prevent fraudulent transactions. OK, this is one of the uh, one of the uh, major tasks in banking and finance. Which is uh, done by machine learning applications. Apart from this, uh, we have to identify the insights of the financial data. We have to uh, we have to uh, we have to allowing them to find better investment opportunities. These are, these are the few other uh, few other tasks which are done in banking and finance by machine learning algorithms. In transportation, in transportation, uh, transportation. So both Google and Tesla self-driving cars are powered by machine learning technology, including deep learning, uh, which allows them to interpret, predict, and respond to data critical for autonomous driving. So you have uh, most of you are familiar uh, with the term autonomous driving and self driving cars so they are uh, they are uh, designed with artificial intelligence uh, strategies and artificial intelligence algorithms they are equipped with machine learning algorithms deep learning algorithms and they are able to and uh, uh, they are able to they are able to uh, you know, Powered by this uh, machine learning uh, technology, and uh, whenever uh, uh, apart from these self-driving cars or autonomous uh, autonomous cars, uh, we can have many other applications in transportation. So we will look into it uh, when we will talk about uh, these applications elaborately. Now, uh, one of the interesting applications of machine learning. Uh, algorithms is a recommender system. So, um, um, so most of you are familiar with the Netflix recommendation engine. So uh, what Netflix recommendation engine does? So Netflix recommendation engine create, uh, creates a personalized recommendation. So personalized recommendation for movies, for animation films, for TV programs. So this Netflix is considered uh, considered uh, to have uh, a collection of movies, a collection of TV programs, a collection of animation films. OK, and many of uh, many of uh, us are having uh, profiles uh, in Netflix. Now, according to their uh, according to their uh, choices, personal choices, according to their tagging to the uh, tagging to the movies. So further, uh, Netflix recommendation engine provide a personalized recommendation of movies. OK, personal recommendation of movies, uh, then it will filter uh, it filters it filters out. Uh, it filters out uh, the movies according to our profile, according to our choice, according to our like, according to our tagging uh, to the uh, tagging to the 
different movies and different uh, different tv programs different animation films so this personalized recommendation is created for each and every user who are having their profiles in netflix okay so at the recommendation uh, engine uh, filters over 3000 titles at a time using 1300 recommendation clusters based on user preferences so user preferences means let us consider uh, i am having a i am having a profile or i am having uh, i am having a user profile in uh, netflix okay now uh, previously uh, i have made some i have made some choices uh, of films uh, or movies and tv programs now whenever next time uh, i will visit the netflix uh, by login to my profile login to my uh, user account in netflix so i can see that uh, there uh, there are already uh, already a personalized recommendation is created by netflix okay and which will be reflect which will be found reflected in my profile okay so this personalized recommendation i have not created this personalization uh, personalized recommendation but the, uh, this is been created by the netflix recommendation engine okay because previously i have made some i have made some choices i have made some i have given some preferences okay and according to them according to my preferences according to my choices according to my taggings according to my profile so netflix recommendation uh, engine uh, creates this personalized recommendation of movies and other programs uh, for users so behind this netflix recommendation engine uh, neural networks uh, uh, neural networks then many other many other uh, machine learning algorithms uh, are work okay so behind this uh, recommendation engine uh, we can see that uh, there are several machine learning algorithms uh, are working now if we consider the healthcare so as i said that uh, disease one of the major application uh, one of the major application in healthcare is disease detection or disease identification so uh, sometimes what uh, when we when we uh, when we design a machine learning algorithm and if it is designed for the healthcare then obviously uh, uh, we can we can find uh, several applications in healthcare like disease identification and diagnosis so here diagnosis means the if we try to mimic the clinical diagnosis that means this clinical diagnosis the mimicking the clinical diagnosis diagnosis is incorporated in machine learning algorithms okay and whenever we run the machine learning algorithms then this machine learning algorithms are are working by analyzing the external data and external this external data means whenever uh, doctors uh, whenever doctors go for uh, whenever doctors go for clinical study on patient okay and patient conditions and uh, if the x rays are taken x rays are captured and ct scans are captured various tests are done and screenings are done then on this on this uh, various uh, on this various test and screenings this external data is uh, this external data is collected okay and on this external data uh, machine learning uh, algorithms or machine learning uh, algorithm uh try to analyze try to analyze this data and by analyzing this data uh, similar to the uh, similar to the uh, doctor they can they can mimic the clinical uh, diagnosis even they uh, even the machine learning algorithms can able to uh, identify the diseases okay so this is one of the major applications uh, in healthcare disease identification and diagnosis apart from this personalized medical treatment smart health record disease prediction drug discovering and manufacturing medical imaging so these are the other few uh, applications uh, which are uh, which are uh, performed by machine learning algorithms in healthcare so this
if you have any questions you can ask me otherwise we will stop now and in the next class on thursday uh, we will start uh, from uh, 4:15 uh, okay so next class will be held on thursday and time is 4:15 Okay, that's all for today. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir.